what happened in Minneapolis. Now, Minneapolis currently is, uh, I mean, the whole country is tuned into what's going on with Derek Chauvin and his trial. There's been a ton of coverage on my channel about that. There's been a ton of coverage, uh, I know, by Tina Desiree Berg and various different content creators have talked about what's going on in the Derek Chauvin trial. And actually, at the very end of this stream, as a little bonus, I'm going to read you a comment that was left on one of my videos talking about the trial. Uh, that really, it's like this level of racism is. Um, I had just for I had just not experienced it for a while, and when I when I when I saw it, it was a bit of a shock. So that that portion is coming up uh, later. But let's let's look at this article here from the World Socialist website that talks about what happened with Dewante Wright. And uh, I want to I want to give a shout out to uh, my friend Senthal, who's from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, fantastic comedian, very funny comedian. I, I usually have him open for me when I go to uh, uh, Minneapolis, and I and I fucking miss touring through Minneapolis. Uh, but he pointed out that I did make a mistake in my tweet and my posts promoting the stream. Uh, that I spelt Duante Wright's name wrong, and I want to apologize for that. I do believe that I have his name spelt correctly um, everywhere else. Uh, so my apologies to Duante Wright for for misspelling his name. Uh, you know, I did I didn't mean any disrespect, but it has been corrected here. So let's let's read through this this portion of the article that kind of really goes over uh, what happened with Duante Wright. So. Uh, on Sunday afternoon, shortly after 1.30 p.m., longtime Brooklyn Center Police Department officer Kimberly Potter, 48, shot and killed the 20-year-old father during a traffic stop. The Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension confirmed that Potter is also the president uh, of the Brooklyn Center Police Union. Potter is white and Wright was black. In a contentious Monday morning press conference, uh, Brooklyn Center Police Chief Tim Gannon stated that Wright had been pulled over because of an expired registration tag. During the traffic stop, Gannon alleges officers discovered a warrant for Wright and an attempt to arrest him. In just over one minute body cam video released by the police at the press conference, Wright's vehicle is observed along with two other male uh, cops, one on the driver's side and one on the passenger side. Rat Wright is told to exit the vehicle, which he does, and... Wright has his back turned to the police with one cop attempting to put him in handcuffs. Potter reaches for and grabs one of Wright's arm. Wright reacts by slipping out of the grip of the police, then sitting back down in the driver's seat of his car. So he's not fleeing the scene of the crime. At this point, Potter pulls out her pistol and points it at, Taser, uh, points it at Wright for at least five seconds as she's pointing the gun at Wright, she states, I will tase you, followed by the words, taser, 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 which, uh, uh, at which point she discharges her firearm, shooting Wright once. Now, that is something that cops are supposed to do. When they pull out their taser, they're supposed to give a warning that they're about to tase somebody and say, taser, 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 and then tase them. That, that's that been recounted in, in various police videos where they use a taser. Um and, and then she goes on to do this. She says, holy shit, I just shot him, Potter explained. This statement coupled with the video footage led Gannon to characterize the shooting as an accidental discharge. Uh, after Wright was shot, the vehicle lurched forward for a short distance before crashing into a parked car. Wright's girlfriend, who was in the car throughout the entire episode, was injured during the accident. Police and government officials have had refused to name Potter for more than 24 hours after the killing. She was first identified Monday evening by the Minneapolis Star Tribune uh, based on two law enforcement sources with direct knowledge of the case. Potter has been placed on administrative leave pending Wright's death, an investigation into Wright's death. OK, so lots of lots of things to, to talk about in this article. First of all, uh, Officer Potter has been with the force for 26 years. You, you, you got to know the difference between a gun and a taser by that point. This You can claim accidental discharge on it, but who gives a shit? A kid got killed. 
a 20 year old kid got murdered and in reality would a taser even be like the appropriate response for this he slipped out of your hand and he went back into the car and sat back in his vehicle that's all he did that's not fleeing the scene of the crime that's not resisting arrest he wasn't being violent and in your attempts to drag him out of his car you decided a taser would be the right thing to do. Now, what if that taser had missed? He was in close proximity with his girlfriend. You would have then tased an innocent bystander along with it. So again, is the taser the right thing to use in this situation? Probably not. Your de-escalation tactics should be how to talk these people down. There are plenty. There, there's very few videos out there that show how police officers talk people down, which is what de-escalation would be. Uh, that's not what happened. Again, you can claim accidental discharge, but a 26-year veteran of the police department should know the difference between a taser and a firearm. Not only that, but you also had enough time to pull the thing out and point it at him, tell you him that you're going to tase him, and then yell, taser, taser, taser. So it's, I'm going to tase you, taser, taser, taser. In that time, you can very clearly feel that it's not a taser. You can very clearly see that it's not a taser and go, oh, shit, I have the wrong thing out. Holster it and pull out the right thing. But she didn't. She just reacted. Again, that is something that they're trained to do. It's part of the police training. It's why there needs to be a total uprooting and reformation of the police system uh, because the police system now makes the cops think that their lives are in constant danger by anybody at any time and that we, the people, the people that they are, quote, supposed to protect and serve, even though they don't, they really protect and serve the the rich and they, you know, watch over their shit. But the, 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 the PR spin is that they're supposed to protect and serve the people. Um, you know, even if this was accidental discharge, you still killed somebody. A 26 year veteran should know better. This would probably be a second degree murder charge. Now, the concern I have is, uh, if this goes into trial, um, you know, I would wager to bet that, that, an Eric Nelson type, Eric Nelson is the DA for Derek Chauvin. He, that person would come in and basically make the argument that, that DeWante Wright was killed on, on the impact of hitting the other vehicle, which is ridiculous uh, because his girlfriend was injured. But I mean, if, if that was the case, then wouldn't she have been killed or, or, or been injured far worse than what she was. So that's not really going to hold up. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be lots of people that are going to paint him out to be a criminal. And, you know, even if he did have a warrant out for his arrest, why not explain that warrant to him? Why not calmly tell him what's going on? Why not, uh, you know, give him the opportunity to turn himself in? And what's the warrants for? I mean, they put warrants out for having unpaid parking tickets. Which really, unpaid parking tickets needs a warrant. Just because it's a law doesn't make it right. The police department didn't release her name for 24 hours, which, which just means that they know they fucked up and they were trying to protect the identity of the cop. And now look, you again, you can claim that this was accidental, which would give it a second degree murder charge. Right. Unlike Derek Chauvin, who realistically can you can prove that he got first. He, he it was first degree murder by the time that you're on his neck and the and the pushing you know, the paramedics had to push him off. He denied him. Uh, the guy kept saying, I can't breathe for 27 times. That's that all claims that you knew what you were doing, dude. You knew what you were doing. You were on his neck. Medical professionals have come out and said that this is positional asphyxiation. 
on 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 trial they've said this um what she did was clearly like oh shit you didn't realize that you had a fucking gun in your hand which is insane that a 26 year veteran of the police department doesn't know that um but even if you did that's second degree murder you don't get paid administrative leave for that you get fired from the force and really she probably needs some counseling The intent for Derek Chauvin was to kill George Floyd. Out of, oh man, I'm scared. Oh, there's people calling me a bum. I'm so nervous. What do I do? I'm frozen in fear. Bullshit. This lady can claim I didn't mean to shoot the guy, but I but I did plead the guilty, take the second degree murder charge, uh, get fired from the force and never work in law enforcement again. Sorry, but I mean, 26 years you were in the force and you made a pretty catastrophic mistake there. Part of the reason because of your training. It demonizes everybody that's not wearing a, a, a fucking, you know, blue outfit with a badge. This is why we say we need to fundamentally fucking change the police system. Obviously, there was a protest, right? Because, yes, we need we, th this is what we have to protest. Um, the cops called the protest an unlawful assembly. That's what they called it. Which is how authoritarian forces refer to protests as. They call them unlawful assemblies. It wasn't approved. Okay, they didn't fill out the right paperwork and get the right permits to go out there and say that cops should stop murdering black people in this country. It wasn't approved. Where's your permits to protest? Uh, it's called the First Amendment. And it's lawful protesting. It's not unlawful. None of that was unlawful. They called the National Guard in. Right? Uh, again, these, this is not how democracies act when their citizens protest something very legitimate to protest. It's how authoritarian, you know, pro-capitalist authoritarians act when they're caught red-handed with their hand in the cookie jar, fucking up everybody's cookies. By Monday, there was a hundred more riot cops. They called in more National Guard. And this makes people nervous. We know that. The presence of police in militarized gear makes people more nervous and on edge. Uh, and there was no response from the cops as to why such extreme forces were being called for peaceful protests. Uh, the protests didn't get violent until the cops showed up and started using chemical weapons and rubber bullets against the protesters. And then what are you supposed to do? I mean, the protesters are going to re retaliate. I mean, this is playground rules. Right. Like if you have a bully unnecessarily fucking trying to beat you up and fight you. You're going to fight back. You're going to retaliate. And that's fine. Maybe we shouldn't chastise people for retaliating when bullies are fucking using chemical weapons against them. Maybe we should be like, hey, how about you stop bullying? Maybe don't bring the fucking riot gear. And the National Guard for peaceful protests. And moreover than that, we all know, I mean, I've I've witnessed the undercovers that try to rattle up protesters, that put them even more on edge so that they, you know, start getting more violent. That's what they do. They try to agitate people. I've seen it. A lot of other people have seen it. There, there's, there's shitsters and anarchists that come in and they infiltrate the protests and they start causing destruction. And then the whole becomes, oh, all protests are just looting and rioting. That's all they are. The cops responded to why, why such heavy handed response to peaceful protests. And they go, well, they're just, uh, uh, they were just there to return fire. Well, then why did they fire? Oh, they were returning fire to, to what? Someone threw a water bottle. 
a water bottle. Could that have injured the police officers through their battle armor, through their fucking RoboCop armor that they're wearing? If a fucking water bottle can do fucking damage to the cops, you probably shouldn't be a cop. I have been at concerts where I've had a water bottle thrown at my head. You know what I didn't do? I didn't lob tear gas into the fucking pit. If I could find that water bottle, fucking cool. Free water bottle. I went to a brand new concert when I was in college. This is over a decade ago. And I accidentally, during one of the songs, punched a dude in the face. And I looked at him, and he looked at me, and we I apologized to him. And he was like, fuck it, man. Let's just enjoy the show. And then we both, like, started dancing together. If you can't handle that, don't be in the pit. If you can't handle a water bottle being thrown at you through your battle armor that you that 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 millions and millions of dollars were spent on, then you probably shouldn't be a cop. Same thing in the Chauvin trial. If the words bum and loser and idiot and fuckface all hurt you and it gives you owies on the inside, and then you can't do anything but murder a bunch of people, then you shouldn't be a fucking police officer because you're a sociopath. That the owies from the words mean you have to kill somebody. Biden responded with uh, no tolerance for looting and violence. Once again, making the correlation that any protest against the police is the equivalent of looting and violence, which once again gives the cops carte blanche that when there is a peaceful assembly, when there is a peaceful protest to lob tear gas in because they're just, quote, returning fire. The president of the country, the leader of the land, the ch big chief, the big kahuna of the country has said that uh, has equated protesting to looting and violence. So it gives cops carte blanche who already have it in their minds that these people are their enemies because that's how they're trained. And now the president of the United States equating protests with looting and violence has given them carte blanche to fucking do so. And this is coming side by side with a CNN article that I that I out outlined and detailed last Friday. That video is available for, for, for easy viewing. It's a click of button to fucking view it that outlines how they're criminalizing protests, how they're saying, oh, all these protests have increased crimes because they're deviating police resources. Motherfucker, police resources don't need to be donated to protests. You could have two or three beat cops making sure that people aren't pissing in the wind or littering or what have you. You don't need armed guards to show up. You don't need battle armor to fucking stop a bunch of kids with signs and water bottles. That's on you. That's a misuse of your funds, but they're using that as a justification to say these protests are illegitimate and these protests need to be stopped and these protests are increasing crime. Mix that with what Biden is saying and how he's equating it with looting and rioting. And now you have this clear justification to criminalize protests in America. And there are people who are media illiterate that are going to just go by this, that are just going to go and, and say, yeah, OK, maybe they should be nicer about it. Here's how you should protest. I know you're angry that like cops keep get killing innocent black people and brown people across the country, but like, can you stop yelling about it? Can you just go on Twitter and do the hashtags because the hashtags work? But if you like say stuff about it, it makes me feel uncomfortable on my inside because I've invested in the cops. They protect me as a rich white liberal. And they're going to justify a new crime bill using this article, using this rhetoric, using the, the this this manipulation of the people. They're going to justify a new crime bill. They're going to justify keeping qualified immunity for cops. And they're going to justify putting more money into the police departments, which they don't fucking need. Last two paragraphs. So this says, despite the fact that Minnesota politics is dominated by the Democratic Party, the epidemic of unaccountable police murder continues throughout the state. In the first week of the year, Minneapolis police killed Somali-American immigrant Dolal Eid and subsequently terrorized his family in Eden Prairie. 
So again, we're, we're, we're seeing cops killing people and getting away with it, right? Uh, I, I hadn't heard about the Dolal Eid story, uh, something for me to look into for, for possibly a later stream. Uh, the killing of Wright comes less than two weeks after Chicago police executed 13-year-old Adam Toledo and Democratic Mayor Lori Lightfoot is working with the police to smear the young child and his family while delaying the re release of the damning police body cam footage. In fewer than 103 days, MappingPoliceViolence.org has recorded 268 killings by U.S. police so far this year and nearly three killings per day. Per three killings per day. Insane, insane. And Democrats are, you know, again, this notion of everything will change after the Democrats are in power is that that saying should be out of people's mouths nonstop. You shouldn't be saying, give them a chance. They just got the no, 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 no. None of that shit fucking matters. They had an opportunity, they fucked it up, and they continue to fuck it up. You have Democratic mayors, Democratic governors, smearing children and innocent black people, calling protests, looting and rioting. The, the, the liberal news outlet, the quote, 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 liberal news outlet, is, is coming out in favor of criminalizing protests. This is what happens regardless of what party is in power. What needs to happen is systemic change. Uproot what's there and plant something new. The ground is poisoned. And this is what happens when the ground becomes poisoned. Children are murdered and Democratic mayors are smearing them. The the Adam Toledo story, another another story that I will probably cover as well because it because it did slip through my cracks. Uh all right, let's look at a few comments here. Uh, if you if you see a picture of Duante Wright, uh, it is obvious why they used and mistook uh, mistook it for my taser excuse. I don't think the fear for my life excuse would have held up very good. Yeah, they they kind of tried to do that with with Elijah McClain that they were oh the officers were fearing for their life kind of thing because they didn't understand what he was saying. I'm different. This is very uncomfortable please let me go was was that not clear enough how is that scary it's the same thing with this is like he's a skinny black dude whoops accidental fire not your police training fundamentally teaches cops to be afraid of the other shane goes on to say it must be so difficult not to just kill people i don't know how i've made it this long by doing so for real though all they have to do is stop killing people yep it's literally as simple as that isn't it it's literally as simple as that. It's insane. Uh, let me pop over to Rockfin. I have to find the old screen. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So we're still on the original original stream, which is great. Ba, 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 ba. They sent him to court. They sent him the court notice to the wrong address, apparently. And still put out a warrant. Uh, he, oh, oh is, is that what happened? Okay, so they so they did send him a warrant, but it went to the wrong address. And then, but then it's like, how is that their fault? That seems to be like an internal departmental fault, and they should have made a note of that. Uh, Fred says, "Violent talk. I'm feeling attacked. I'm snowflaking." Uh, paraphrasing TV series Resident Alien on Sci-Fi. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. That's kind of the way that they phrase it. The way that they phrase it is, oh, these these words are so harsh. These cops can't take it. Could you imagine? And it's like, don't they? But, but isn't isn't like machismo and bravado and all that kind of crap part of the police narrative to make him make them feel tough? Right. Uh, Fred's asking, was it a Perrier bottle uh, that wouldn't hurt through the armo, uh, armor, though? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I even, but let's be honest. If a protester can afford a Perry air bottle, uh, they're probably, you know, doing it to pat themselves in the back and get some Instagram likes. <laughs> they were probably plainclothes officers throwing water bottles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that that's also a possibility, right? Like the, the people that are throwing water bottles might be plainclothes officers. Um, we saw Max Blumenthal 
Max Blumenthal was, uh, uh, he followed um, a, a plainclothes officer into a protest. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, let me see. I want to get back to some of the a a comments you guys are leaving about the uh, uh, Assange protests here. So, and thank you guys for sticking around on the um, on the stream, despite the little bit of technical difficulties we had. Uh, so, uh, Shane saying to try Mozilla Firefox. It's it's free and open source. For whatever reason, uh, Firefox has also been pretty buggy on my computer. I might have to just do an overhaul on the computer itself. It seems like like the fan keeps kicking up for no reason. So that that probably means that I I I might have to uh, call Apple support and talk to them about what's going on. Um, and and maybe maybe there's an upgrade or something that I need. So, but thank you guys for 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 hanging out and and sticking with the stream, despite. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content you can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.